night to each and every one and thank you for joining us tonight in our broadcast. I hope you all are ready to receive all that God has prepared for you. So feel free to share the broadcast, tag your worship crew and let's worship together tonight.
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Good night to you. Good afternoon, wherever you are part across the world. It's certainly a pleasure once again to come and to share with you God's word. There's always a joy and an excitement to share with you. So wherever you're listening to us at this point in time, we appreciate your presence and we thank you for giving us your time and your attention. I want to share with you for a moment from the book of St. Luke chapter 5 and from verse 1 to 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little further from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. And now when he had left speaking, verse 4 says, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drove. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. Verse 7 says, And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the ship, other ships, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ship, so that the boat began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all that were with him. For he was astonished at all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. When they had brought the ships to land, they forsake all and they followed him. Hallelujah. This portion of scripture speaks to us of several things that we can glean several very important things from this portion of scripture. But I would just like to highlight three things that I can draw from this portion of scripture to you so that you can receive grace from God as I speak from my heart, as you hear the voice of God as he ministers to you. The first thing I would like to highlight to you is that the Bible tells us that the, 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 uh, Peter and there, those that was on the shore, the scripture says they were washing their nets. They were washing their nets. Jesus speaking to a multitude, and seeing the multitude before him, he decided that he needed to have something on which he used as a platform to minister to those who presented themselves before him. And the scripture says that he, resolved, he asked Peter, <coughs> excuse me, he asked Peter that he can use his ship for a while so that he can use it as a platform, should I say a pulpit, that he can speak and minister to the persons or people who was in need. But it's interesting, the Bible says, that they were washing their nets. They were washing their nets. And I want to highlight that to you because I want you to recognize it's possibly for two reasons that they were washing the nets. One, it could have been that they had a very successful time of fishing. And so now they were washing the nets to put it aside for the next time that they would go out. Or the other occasion could be that they were washing their nets as a sign of disappointment, suggesting Thing that we had not done or get gotten what we expected and as a result we're washing our nets and to put it away anticipation maybe next time should be a better moment and I believe the latter was their experience based on the scripture. You would understand that the Bible says that they were washing their nets. And for someone to be washing their nets because of the fact that they had not been successful, you can wash your nets with a kind of attitude. You can wash your nets with a sense of disappointment and you feeling as if, well, you have not achieved what you wanted to. And your situation at that moment can be one that may not necessarily be positive. It may be one that you might be feeling a sense of disappointment, as I said. As they washed their nets, they were thinking, possibly we could have tried it things differently. As they washed their nets, they were washing it from their disappointment, washing it from their place of discouragement. But while they were washing it, thank God Jesus came on the scene. And though his focus and the moment was the multitude that he was going to preach to, yet Jesus in his heart was concerned about Peter's livelihood. 
And the scripture says, he asked him to use his ship for a while so that he can speak to the multitude. But when Jesus was completed speaking to the multitude, he turned his attention to Peter. And the Bible tells us that he told him, uh, uh, he asked them to use the ship for a while. And then when he would have used the ship and spoken, Jesus told them, launch out into the deep. Peter, I can imagine, was just amazed at the statement that Jesus would have said because from Peter's experience, Peter was an experienced fisherman. Peter knew exactly what it is to fish and to use all the best methods, <coughs> all the best and techniques that he knew because he was a skilled, experienced fisherman. And though he had all of the techniques and the skills of fishing, on that occasion the Bible tells us that they did not catch anything. And it's interesting that Jesus came on the scene after such a disappointing experience and was now ministering to Peter and speaking to him words that was so somewhat sounding a bit strange in Peter's ear because his understanding and experience suggested that he would have been a man who uh, should have been successful but when he heard Jesus spoken uh, spoke to him he get a sense that why is it he saying to me that I should launch out into the deep and he probably asked himself the question what experience does Jesus have of fishing for him to give him such a directive but I thank God for Peter's response but firstly as I said let me draw three things out of this portion of scripture to you one, I would want to remind you and let you know, whatever condition or situation you find yourself, never let your situation, never let your situation dictate your outcome. And in the portion of scripture, we'll realize that Peter was in a situation, the fisherman was in a situation, and because of this situation, the Bible tells us they were there washing the nets. And when you find yourself in a situation, as some of you might be right now, the situation may not be nice. It might be a financial situation. It might be a, a sickness condition. It might be a mental, emotional, spiritual condition. Whatever the condition that you find yourself in right now, I want you to know that the situation could, should not dictate or determine what your outcome would be. The situation can be bad. The situation can be troubling. The situation can be discouraging. The situation can be very discomforting. But I want you to know that in the midst of your situation you can have a rewarding experience because of the fact that Jesus has an interest in your situation whatever your situation Jesus has an interest as he did in Peter's and those who were fishing with him Jesus showed his interest in their situation and it's important for us to recognize that in the midst of my condition, there is a God who cares about me. There is a God who knows what my present condition and situation is. There is a God who loves me more than any human being can. There is a God who cares about me more than any person in this world can. There is a God who sees my exact situation and he is concerned as to where I am. But he don't want you to settle for that situation being the final resting place. Because as I said before, for your situation should not determine what the outcome is going to be because when Jesus is on the scene situations many times will present itself but when Jesus comes right there on the scene the situation can change I recall in the Bible the Bible tells us about you remember that man who was sitting by the pool for 38 years and he was waiting there he had a situation the Bible says when Jesus came to the pool and saw him sitting there and he asked him the question he says will thou be made whole the scripture tells us he began saying to Jesus Lord I have no one here who is going to help me to assist me to get to the pool because the conditions at the pool was as such that anyone who would have gotten there first would have been healed from whatever disease or complaint they had and this gentleman felt that he was not strong enough he was too feeble he was not bold enough he was not a, a what right enough as it were he was not he did not have what it takes to get to the pool in time and it's interesting that he was there for 38 years and God knows for 38 years he may have been trying he may have been attempting to get there first and maybe he was just on the brink of the edge and somebody always getting there before him but I thank God that 
that his situation had not determined what the outcome would be. Because whenever Jesus comes into a situation, the outcome will always be different. Jesus can change present conditions and he can turn situations around. He can cause bad conditions, ugly situations. My God, he can cause broken things to be made whole. And because of the God that I know he is, he has the power to arrest every situation and turn it into something beautiful. That's why one songwriter makes a statement. He can take, he can cause beauty to come out of ashes. He can cause bad things, oh my God, to be turned into good things. Because the God that we serve, if you're a Christian, you will know this word that says, God is able to cause all things to work together for our good. And I want you to know the thing that might be bad right now. There's a God who is in the midst of it. Who has the power to work it for your good. Oh my God. And I know that you who are listening to me right now. You whose eyes and ears are open right now. Anticipating that somebody may have a word for me. Somewhere God may have a word for you. To bring you out of your present situation. I am saying yes right here. It's a word that God is speaking to you. Your situation might be bad. Your situation might be discouraging. But wait. Jesus is right there on the scene and he can change a bad situation and make it into something beautiful. I admonish you today. I admonish you this night. If you would only open up your heart to Jesus, he can turn a very bad situation and cause the outcome to be quite different. So I said to you, and listen to me right now, don't allow your situation to determine your outcome and if you will check Peter out the Bible says that when Peter listened and heard Jesus ask him, he said, launch out into the deep. The same way the gentleman who was sitting by the pool said to him, Master, I have been here for 38 years and I've been trying. And he may have begun to make an excuse and to say why and give reasons why he's still in this condition after 38 years. And possibly Peter began by saying the same thing. Master, we have toiled all night and we've called nothing. Peter in his mind was saying, I am an experienced fisherman. I have skills and I know the sea more than you. I understand the rudiments and theory of fishing. I know what it takes to be a successful fisherman. But you know what? In spite of all of that, in spite of all the things that Peter would have taught in his mind, somewhere in his heart, he recognized that the person who speaks to him is somebody who has the power to change the present condition, change the present situation and make it into something beautiful. But the Bible tells us that secondly I would like to highlight to you when you find yourself in a situation, you must come to a place in your experience where you can recognize that somebody is speaking to you that is greater than the situation. And that is why Peter was able to say, secondly, nevertheless, at your word. I want you to know you must be able to trust God at his word. And when you trust him at his word, in your mouth will come nevertheless. You know, when we say nevertheless, nevertheless means in spite of all that would have happened, Previously, in spite of all the things that is going on right now, in spite of all my mistakes, in spite of all my difficult situation, in spite of my discouragement, in spite of my depression, in spite of my feelings right now, in the face of all of that, God, I heard your word and I'm willing right now, nevertheless, by your word, I will act upon it. And if you are only listening to God's voice right now, I don't care what situation you find yourself in. If you can only find in your spirit a word that says nevertheless or should I say in spite of all that I'm presently experiencing, in spite of all that I'm going through, in spite of all, all that I've faced, in spite of everything else, I am willing to trust the word of God. I am willing to allow what he speaks to me. I am willing to step out on his word and so I can tell you Peter found out when he stepped out on God's word he says nevertheless Lord at thy word I will move my God and I can give God glory I found out 
out that whenever we choose to listen to God's word, we will always find good success. I know you've been hearing the voices of many persons speaking, the voices of men that you consider great, the voices of persons in influence, positions of influence, the voices of persons who can speak good things to you. Sometimes it might be a wife, a husband, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, somebody who you think might be care, I might care about you, but I want you to know that there is a God whose voice, when you hear his voice, when he speaks, it is different from every other voice that you will ever hear. And I can tell you when Peter heard, Jesus said to him, launch out into the deep. He began questioning, but then somewhere in his spirit, my God, he sensed that desire to just say, nevertheless, I will do what you say. And the Bible tells us that when Peter stepped out on the word of God, he found that there was such success because he chose to trust God's word. If you will trust the word of God tonight, if you will open up your heart to him, if you will allow him to take residence in your heart, if you will allow him to intervene in your situation or condition right now, I want you to know he can change the present outcome. Your present situation don't have to be a permanent experience. There's a Jesus who can change present condition. As I said before, your present situation might be, you might be in a chair cripple. You might be probably a person who just heard today it might have been you visited the doctor and you heard a bad report it might be that right now if you check within your own ability there is no finances to deal with the present expense that is before you it might be conditions that might be different all kinds of situation as human beings we find ourselves in all kinds of condition for Peter it was a disappointing night of fishing for the man who was sitting by the pool it was after trying for 38 years he was still not healed and for the woman who was with the issue of blood it would have been having attempted everything in the past and the Bible says she did not get better but grew worse she purposed in the heart I am going to step out on the word of God I've heard that Jesus has the power to heal Jesus has the power to change my condition and if you will only step out tonight and open up your spirit God's word is going to touch you his power is going to reach you right there in your house, right there in your home, right in your car, wherever you are right now, the power of the presence of God is going to touch you and change your situation and give you a different outcome. But never settle for certain circumstances that might be right now very difficult to deal with. Never settle and agree and accept that this is the condition. I look at Jesus as he spoke to that man who was struggling for 38 years. He said, will you be made whole? And as he began to say to him, ah, Lord, I've been trying for 38 years and there's no one to help me. I, as, as if Jesus said to him, do you want to be made whole? And the Bible said that Jesus spoke a word to him and he says, take up your bed and walk. There's a word that God is speaking to you right now. If you will hear his voice, don't let your hearts be hard. Open up your spirit. Step out on the word of God. Yes, you might be broken. Yes, you might be disappointed. Yes, you might be going through some stuff, but if you step out on God's word, I guarantee you, he is going to bring change in your present experience. There is a God who cares about you. There is a God who loves you. There is a God who wants to give you a different outcome. And finally, from this portion of scripture, I want you to recognize that when you launch out, that's when you will find out. If you stay where you are and continue to say, well, there is, I've tried already. I've done so many things trying to help myself. Like I said before, the woman who was struggling with the issue of blood, she tried many times. She would have attempted all the Bible says she tried many physicians, but she did not get better but grew worse. And I could imagine Peter could have said, as he started saying, Lord, we've tried all night and we have all the ability we know to fish. We use all of that. And you could have said, I, you know, we will not go because we believe that we have enough skills. But the Bible tells us, he says, nevertheless, and you must be able to say to God, yes, Father, I'm going to launch out. God, I will launch out. It's of all the things that may have confronted me previously, in spite of all the things that may have disappointed me, in spite of all that presented itself before me, in spite of everything else, God, I am going to 
launch out. And I can tell you when you launch out, you will discover that God is going to allow his supernatural power. If you step out tonight from sin, if you step out from the bondage, if you choose to step away from alcohol, if you choose to step away from drugs, if you choose to step away from things that you know in your own conscience may have been giving you trouble and you have not been able to overcome it, I am saying to you right now that there is a God if you launch out, if you step out and say to him, Lord, this is the last day. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to give you that place. If you give him that place in your life, I can say to you that right now you will experience his power to break the chain, power to break yokes, power to dismantle the powers of darkness, witchcraft, demonic forces. There is a power available that will change your situation and give you a different outcome because you're willing to launch out and step out on God's word. And I can tell you, if you sit where you are and continue to make excuses, like the man who was by the pool, Lord, I don't have nobody to help me. Lord, I've been trying for 38 years. If you sit in that place where you're making excuses, I and mean, if you sit in that place of procrastination, you will never find out and discover the power of God. You want to know how much he loves you? Just step out. If you want to know how much he cares, you just step out. Wherever you are in your home right now, I want to encourage you. Give Jesus Christ a chance in your life. Let him come into your heart, in your home. Change it. Jesus changed my life years ago. And I have absolutely no regret. And he can change yours. He can change any one of you, wherever you are listening. Jesus Christ can make a difference. I don't care what you're facing, what you're going through, how bad you feel that you've been. I can tell you, doesn't matter how bad and how deep you feel you've gone. Jesus can reach right there in the depths of your sin, in the depths of your brokenness, in the depths of your pain. Doesn't matter how far, he can reach right there and lift you up from that broken place. Somebody make a statement some years ago, there's an old time fable that we say, when Humpy Dumpy fell down, nobody could have put him back together again. And maybe you are like Humpy Dumpy, dumpy in that situation. Broken. Nobody can put it back together. Pers persons may have tried before, but I can tell you, the only person who you have not tried yet is Jesus. Jesus can put you back together. He can put broken pieces. He can heal. He can mend. He can turn around. He can change. He can break yokes. He can lift you. I can tell you anything. There is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing impossible. There is nothing too great for Him. Oh, things are possible to him that will believe God and if you will believe God that sickness can go that demonic spirits that's troubling you in your family will cease if you will believe God every single thing can change right now he can provide everything that you need if you will trust him Peter's need was for fish and he gave him so much more than he needed the gentleman by the pool his need was to be made whole and he got what he needed. The woman who was with the issue of blood, her need was that that blood would cease to flow. And she got what she needed. Zacchaeus' need was to see Jesus and have an encounter. And he got what he needed. I can tell you scores, thousands of people whose need was uh, to have different experiences, but they encountered Jesus. Whatever your need is, it is not beyond Jesus' ability. He can meet that need. If you will open up your spirit right now, say, Lord Jesus, I open up my heart. I come to you right now. Touch me, change me, transform me. Make me whole, change my life. I open up my spirit to you. I renounce sin and I give you that place in my life right now. Have your way in me, Lord. I commit my life to you. Thank you for healing me. Father, I break the chains, I break the yokes, I break the bondage. I release your fire upon every person listening right now. The power of the Holy Ghost will touch the broken, touch the sick, touch the lame, touch the blind, touch the deaf right now. Touch every broken condition. Let the healing power of God be manifested in Jesus' name. If you pray those prayers and agree right now as you launched out, you will experience God's miracle working power as he touched you in your home. We are from World Changes Assembly, situated at number 7 Flanders Street, Newlands Village Beach. Feel free to become a part of the experience where God's presence and power is manifested. And so we give you praise, Lord. We give you glory. God bless you all. Have a great night, everybody. And see you on Sunday, God's willing. God bless you.